There are some fish like the copper banded butterfly that you should absolutely avoid as a beginner and probably even if you're a seasoned pro. But in this video we're going to take a look at seven fish that are even more difficult than the likes of the copper band and should only be attempted by master level fish keepers. I'll start with the least difficult and work up to the hardest and to balance out all the negativity I'll also tell you the closest easy to keep alternatives. And if it's your first time here and you want a weekly dose of reefing goodness make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out when I upload. First up is the orange spotted filefish. This is a finicky eater and it's extremely difficult to find a fat healthy looking specimen in your local fish shop. They eat corals in the wild so weaning them onto prepared foods will more often than not prove very difficult indeed and they'll almost certainly snack on your corals while you're trying to wean them onto the good stuff. There was a study several years ago that suggested they only eat Aquapora millipora corals, but it doesn't take much googling to find anecdotal evidence that they will eat pretty much anything they can get their grubby little fins on. The alternative though is of course the Aptasia eating filefish. It's cheap, easy as pie to keep, has bags of character and will even eat those pesky Aptasia anemones. The only catch is that there's a very good chance this little blighter will also nibble on your corals. Such is life. Next up is the multibar angelfish. This is one of the most beautiful angelfish in the hobby, but it is also pretty much the most difficult to keep. It's a delicate species that is mostly collected from the Philippines, which means they spend a long time in both handling and transit. That means that selecting the right specimen is absolutely paramount, and even then they usually refuse to eat anything you offer and will eventually wither and die. The good news though is that the gold flake angel is almost as stunning and much easier to keep. While it's not quite a beginner friendly fish, any relatively experienced reefer should be absolutely fine with this guy. The drawbacks though are that they will set you back 4 to 500 pounds and will probably still nibble on your corals. Reef dock giveth and reef dock taketh away. Next up are Ventralis Antheas. Now all Antheas commonly available in the hobby are a challenge to keep long term, and even the easier species like Resplendent Antheas will usually fight until there's only one left. But the Ventralis is generally considered to be one of the hardest available Antheas. They're a secretive species found at depths of up to 120 meters, so they prefer cooler temperatures and lower light than most of us run in our reef tanks. They also fight to the death in groups and require several feedings per day due to their active lifestyle, which will likely have a knock-on effect on your nutrients if you're one of the few people who manage to keep them alive for more than a few months. Now because Antheas are primarily bought because they're a shoaling fish, the best alternative is the Springer's Damsel. While they do bicker in groups, unlike most Antheas, they don't usually fight to the death. They're also extremely hardy and easy to keep, and add a nice splash of blue, a colour that's hard to come by in marine fish. Number 4 on my list of master level fish is a group of wrasses known as Anampsis. This includes the likes of the yellow-tailed tamarin, the china rasp and the stunning femininus wrasp. Their health often suffers during collection and shipping, so finding a healthy specimen is again a real challenge. But even if you do find a settled specimen, say from a fellow hobbyist, they can still wither and die for no apparent reason. Maybe it's because of the stress of moving home, or maybe just because they're finicky eaters. And my alternative is a stunning Halicoris ras called the Imuff ras. Mature adults can display vivid colours and patterns, and while they're not necessarily a beginner fish, I'd only class them as medium difficulty, and they are much more hardy than the Anamsis genus, and arguably only marginally less pretty. Onto the podium then, and we have another group of wrasses, the Macropharyngodons. This includes the likes of the Cauteri, Coyote and Leopard Wrass, all of which are extremely difficult to acclimate to aquarium conditions, and the prospects of keeping these in young, immature tanks are even lower. As with all fish on this list, getting them feeding is the tough part, so it's strongly advisable to avoid these guys unless you have an established tank with abundant microfauna like delicious amphipods and copepods, and even then the chances of survival are minimal. My alternative for this group is one of the many fairy wrasses. Unlike most wrasses, fairies don't sleep in your sand bed, and they can often be seen swimming around at the top of your tank, displaying their impressive fins. The dive bombing Naoko wrasse is a great option, as is the gorgeous Makoskas wrasse. The second most difficult saltwater fish on my list is a group of butterfly fish. They're obligate corallivores, which means they only eat corals, so they are totally unsuitable for home aquariums 
And if there was ever a fish that should be left in the sea, it's these guys. The fish I'm referring to are the ornate, oval, four spot and multiband butterflies. And the only reason they don't rank as number one on this list is because they're not imported as frequently as my number one choice. And while there are many possible easy to keep butterflies, my alternative suggestion is the Mitratus butterfly. They are to my eye one of the most beautiful butterflies in the hobby and they're relatively easy to keep. They're from a subgenus called the Roops butterflies that are supposedly reef safe because they live in deep waters where they don't see the corals we keep in our aquariums. But butterflies are notorious for eating corals, so I wouldn't exactly bet my house on that. And the most difficult fish in the aquarium hobby is the Moorish Idol. Unsurprisingly, getting these to feed is the foremost challenge. They reportedly only eat sponges in the wild, so anything other than an enormous 10-year-old reef tank is almost certain to have an inadequate food supply for this majestic animal. And while some people have success weaning expert-only fish like the copper-banded butterfly onto prepared foods, the same cannot be said of Moorish Idols. In 2008, admittedly a good few years, years ago now, Kieran Dodds wrote an article for Tropical Fish magazine in which he studied Moorish idols in captivity over the course of three years. He studied a total of 382 idols, none of which survived. But ending on a high note, I present the yellow long-nosed butterfly. Of all the alternates on this list, this is the closest in appearance to the master fish, being laterally compressed and sharing the same colours. I'll describe them as moderately difficult to keep, and being a butterfly, they are a risk to corals, but that's a risk I would personally be prepared to take, as their beak is more suited to pecking small crustaceans out of rocks than it is munching on expensive corals. Why do fish always go for the expensive corals? At least start on my zoas, mate. Now while I wouldn't recommend any of these fish, the key to success with any difficult fish is selecting a healthy, well-rested specimen that's been feeding in your local fish shop for months, not weeks. Locating such a specimen will take a lot of patience, but will reward the diligent and skilled aquarist who's prepared to put in the time and effort and make the necessary sacrifices in order to keep these fish. Now I'd like to say a huge thank you to Josh Silsbury who provided the awesome photo for the thumbnail of this video. You can follow him on Instagram at Josh Sills for more pro level aquarium photography. And a quick nod to those of you on Ultimate Reef who suggested tricky fish on the thread I started. Honourable mentions go to the various sand sifting fish who often die of starvation and the striking leafy dragons who just miss the cut. If you enjoyed the video then give it a thumbs up and subscribe for next week and until next time, happy reefing.